have this professional journal, and when I teach, I, um, I use it in class, and I jot down what I'm going to teach, but I often have students do journal writing activities in class in relationship to whatever the content is that I'm teaching. And um, so what I end up doing is I have the students do journal activities, and I always do them with them so that the back of my journal tends to be free writes and journal activities that I'm doing with students in class. So I flip the journal over, have them do something, and then I do it, I mean, flip the journal over from the professional side, and then have write through from the back. And I sometimes do that, but then sometimes I just put the free writes right in the journal wherever I am mm -hmm. chronologically. And we have taught journal keeping together here at Portland State University for 10 years. So um, we have a lot of ways in which we use our journals in the classroom. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you do? What I do with mm -hmm. students? Mm -hmm. When I teach, uh, I use journals in every single one of my classes. And um, I have some resistance from students who've had not had a good experience with journals. And so I usually ask them to set that hesitation aside and try to just engage in the activities and see where they go. And it is a course requirement. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and I've learned from Joanne more about how, do you, how to integrate the journal more into the content of the class that rather than just for personal development. Some mm -hmm. of the activities that she does, I do now in my class and are written about in the book. So uh, I, I just feel like to students, I had a student once say, and I wrote about this in the book, I don't do journaling, and I said to him, you don't do term papers either, so... <laughs> this is 20% of your grade, This is why you have to do it here, yeah, sorry. It's going to happen for you. <laughs> you know, so mostly I do that because I know the value of reflection mm -hmm. for adults. Mm -hmm. Adults are so much on fast forward all the time that they don't take the time to, they don't even know that it's valuable for them to do that. And I think the journal, keeping a journal helps them begin to understand that that reflective life, that examined life, is a really important, important thing for their own mental health, physical health, and uh, life in general. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say um, that I use it for the same things. I really want, uh, we both teach graduate courses in education. We're developing professionals. We want them to be thinking about the ideas in our classes and how those connect to their own professional right, exactly. life. What, what can you, uh, how can you apply this to your own experience? Uh, it's interesting because I've just been reading over some of their responses on our survey, uh, and they say things like, it's therapeutic. It's mm -hmm. interesting to hear them say that. Mm -hmm. And also that it helps them to uh, think more deeply about the course content, to yep. think more yep. about what's yep. going on. I teach research, I teach qualitative research, and I use it in both my beginning and advanced qualitative research courses because I really think that they need to think about who they are as a, a researcher, especially in qualitative research. The person is the research instrument. So who are you? And how, how what are your beliefs, your values, and how are those going to um, affect right. the way you conduct research. Right. And so I want them to be very reflective about who they are as mm -hmm. people, uh, as well as who they are as researchers. And they, they talk some about how useful that is. But I also ask my students to uh, write in their journals after they've read. Just a short passage on what did you think about what you just read. Do you agree with it? Do you not agree with it? What questions do you have? What confusions do you have? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of responses to the readings that they can make. And I and what they report is that that helps them to learn the material better. Yeah, I remember I looked at your surveys. You have a really strong, yeah. strong connection to the value of keeping a journal in the class for that reason. Mm -hmm. And But you let them do computer journals as well as handwritten. Is I do. Right? I is do. Right? I, some people are just addicted to the keyboard, the right. way that I'm addicted to um, journal yeah. writing and handwriting. I really wouldn't want to do it on the keyboard. So I, I do let people uh -huh. uh, choose the venue that mm -hmm. they want to use. Uh, and I think that, that helps them maybe to be more willing to do it. I still get people who say, 
I had one response that I was reading in the survey that said I'd rather discuss it in class. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are people who reflect better in conversation than they mm -hmm. do on paper. But if you're teaching a graduate course, folks, your students need to know how to write. That's right. And I think that's one of the really important things we have to teach people in graduate school is how to be better writers. And one way is to practice. Right. So practice writing. And that means well, write frequently in your journal. Well, you know, and I was thinking about that, the professional journal. One of the things that's the advantage of a professional journal, which I teach students to keep in my class, just the model I have, is that they're writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're writing. They aren't just listening and depending on their ability to listen or hear what's going on, but they're actually writing. And so I think developing that habit, that affirmation, that confidence, um, that fluency of writing through something, which a lot of the exercises can do, I think those help, the journal helps that, mm -hmm. so that people can sit down and put words on a page, they don't have to edit them, just get them out there and then work with them after that. Mm -hmm. So I think the journal allows that partly because it's private, and that's a whole other issue, but it's private basically and it's, it doesn't have a lot of rules about grammar and it's very expressive. Yeah, that issue of privacy is one um, that I thought about. And in fact, I jotted a note to myself that I <laughs> wanted to uh, mention that as a caution because we, there's some interesting articles on that and we talk about it in the book. But uh, some people think of the word journal and equate it with diary and mm -hmm. then they equate that with intimacy and they think they have to disclose their private thoughts in ways that we really find sort of dangerous for students and we want them to take care of themselves and that is not what we're requiring at all and in fact I tell my students if you wander into something that's private that you don't want to share with me if I'm reading the journal then just uh, fold it down and staple it shut and yeah, then right. uh, that's a way for them <coughs> to keep themselves safe because actually if you if you are writing and it truly is a process of discovery you may end up in a place right, where uh, right. you're grappling with a private issue right and right. so there should be some way for them to to do that right right and they should know right up front in the beginning of the class. Are, are you going to read the journal or not? And or who's you the audience for this journal? Yeah, who's yeah. the audience? Yeah. And because audience colors what we write and what we expose, and so it's very important for them to know. And in order to feel safe, if you have them do writing exercises in class, you need to tell them you are going to share this with your neighbor um, before they write. Not after, <laughs> uh, because then they'll feel safe and they can. Well, if if they'll know the they'll know the parameters. Right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other caution that I would give is make sure that it's meaningful, uh, because you'll find that the greatest objections you you have from students who've kept a journal before is that it was just busy work. I had one of my students tell me that they were required to write so many pages and they'd all sit in the cafeteria before class started and scribble out nonsense for 10 pages or whatever. And that is really unfortunate <laughs> um, because writing is such a powerful and wonderful mm -hmm. and useful tool uh, and that really sort of, I think, reinforces a waste of time. Um, so I make sure that my students, and we've done this too in our journal keeping class, uh, that their writing is connected to either the course content or their own lives or something meaningful for them rather right. than to just be busy work. Right, exactly. Like, uh, name the five key parts of this chapter. Feels to me more like busy work. It, mm -hmm. Unless you mm -hmm. extend it or you're saying, how do these relate to your life? Uh, what are the uh, problems, critique of these ideas? That, that gets them more engaged and active. So the journal becomes much more of a lively tool, a mm -hmm. live tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, we have talked to a lot of faculty in different disciplines and there are cases in the book that talk about the ways it's used in architecture for helping students to see better, uh, the ways it's used in dance to help interpret movement, uh, the way it's used in the nursing field and clinical settings for them to think about their own experience right. in the field. Uh, and there, so there are just a variety of um, goals that various mm -hmm. faculty have for the use of journals and it varies with the discipline.